I've been thinking a lot about the magic of numbers, the power they have, the power they have in folk tales and the power they still have for us today. For instance, in folk tales you often get the one, two, three characters or somebody doing something once, twice and three times. Hence the saying, three times lucky. In folk tales, there's often three brothers or three sisters and they attempt to do something that is very difficult to do. So the first brother or sister attempts to maybe uh, travel, journey somewhere to acquire something special, which is difficult to get hold of, and they fail. So the second one comes in, the second brother or sister, and they try again, and they almost do it, but they also fail. And then the third one comes in, and hey presto, they achieve the goal of whatever it is they're trying to acquire. Now, this has a very, very long history. The one, two, and three is is very prominent in life, not just in folk tales, or folk tales are about life, but in life today it happens. Particularly, I was thinking of when there are uh, three children in a family, or two children in a family, or just one child in a family. You end up with the one, two, three again. And the more I look at this, I realise that it, it never fails to correspond to what many of the folk tales uh, tell us about. So where there is one child, we have a habit of saying the only child, that child was spoiled because they were on their own. And to a degree, this uh, is inevitable because one on their own is a rather a lonely affair but it's inevitable that all the concentration all the emphasis is going to be on that one child that one person so they come in for literally everything that is thrown their way so when you get to two children uh, that becomes a little bit, in some ways, more balanced, but in other ways, more difficult. Because two means that there's going to be a power struggle. Uh, two of anything means there's going to be a power struggle. Quite often, there's a vying for power between two. And power is a big issue. It's a big issue anyway in life, but where you've got two of anything, then you're going to get one trying to take all the power and then the other one steps in and tries to do the same. And invariably there's a, a fight so that one of the two ends up stronger than the other. Um, this is true in many cases of toxic relationships. You often get one person with another vying for power. It's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. But when that turns a bit sour and the power desire is so strong, then it just pulls and pulls and pulls on everything around it and ends up being the centre. And it isn't in the centre. If, if there are two, you cannot possibly be in the centre you're going to have this conflict with someone else and you invariably get somebody who's got all the power and then you get somebody who's got a weakened sense of power. This happens with two children, it happens in folk tales, for instance, you have, uh, well, you have the classical biblical story of Cain and Abel and you also have, uh, go back to Sumer, you have Enki and Enlil and, and they're doing the same. They're wrestling with the power issue. So let's just have a, a quick brief look at the uh, three. 
When there are three children, where are, there are three in a folk tale, you've often got the once, twice, three times. But the power gets distributed more than with the two. So what you end up having is the power being contained in one and then it can shift sometimes to another. The emphasis is often on the third one, the third child, the third character, because that's true in all folktale history and it resonates today. So when you get the youngest child, they're often favoured and the eldest one can be seen to get on with it because they're the eldest one. The second one feels a little bit put out and when you get a middle child they're neither the one who's, who's come first and the one who leads the way nor are they, are they the one that's receiving all the attention because they're the third one. The one, two and three have specific roles but the emphasis can shift, it can fluctuate and change between them all but by and large anyway the third one is the one that ends up with a lot of the power uh, if you like, uh, a lot of the uh, affection and care and attention um, and the first one even in two the first one is expected to set the standards, I suppose, and just get on with it as they are. And that creates uh, something within us as we grow up. Now, this doesn't just relate to children. This relates to people, to uh, groups uh, of people who are trying to get something to work. Um, you often get a, a dominant person and a weaker person. And... It, it amazes me the way this is continued all through history, through prehistory, through history uh, and into modern times. Uh, you will often find the three acting themselves out with situations when you're trying to achieve something. The first time you might do it and it's a miserable failure. The second time you might do it, you think, wow, yeah, I'm getting something. And then suddenly everything plummets and crashes like a lead balloon down uh, and you don't achieve uh, it at all. The third time you do something, you may find that it's a success or you get a little bit more of what you're looking for. If you don't, then I would say that the, the three times, the three occasions, mean that you just better cancel it out altogether. The, the three is, is very powerful, always. It's always been very powerful. And a lot of my folk will say that you're initiated by the one, two and three. So if you're going through something terribly difficult, having a rough time with something and you're trying to make an exit or trying to escape from it and the first time you think oh look I just can't do this it can't be done and then the second time you try again and you almost do it and then it miserably fails again I'm stroking the dog here behind me trying to keep him quiet while I'm talking and then the third time you actually find well not perhaps success but you find that you're uh, learning a lesson, that you're seeing what you need to do, what you need to create in your life, what you need to initiate in your life to make it work. I'm often looking for this with a lot of my clients when they're saying they want to do something and you can see that it's, it's not going to go very well. But if they change their attitude, changing your attitude is something that is that the numbers favour is something that is quite powerful in itself. Look at the one, two, three in your own life. Look at it in terms of where you stand socially or in the family, but also look at it in terms of situations, how one, two, three impacts your life. Uh, write to me about it, let me know about it if you find anything interesting because I'm always interested in the magical power of numbers. There are uh, other uh, ideas I could present with the power of other numbers but for the moment I think one, two, three 
you best stick with that just to start learning about it. But they are very powerful. They're the most powerful. In prehistoric times, there are a lot of uh, prehistoric people who couldn't count beyond three. It was impossible. Studies have been made in this and it's impossible to go beyond three because they usually say one, two, three, and then there's many. They don't really understand how to count. That's our introduction of mathematics and uh, counting that's caused us to have to count everything and have to put the numbers first before any magical associations. So one, two, three is important in your life. Don't overlook it. Start now studying how you come across it and what it does. And remember that each one has a power of its own. Number one is is prevalent today because it's number one. I got to look after number one. It's the me society, as I'm often saying. Number one isn't so good when it's like that. It's it's quite um, destructive if we start to think like that. We've got to think of the one as our own health and well-being, and uh, the way we perceive ourselves. We've got to study ourselves, learn about ourselves, learn about what we can do in our lives to make things better and to help the world, if you like. Do something that, that helps, rather than focus entirely on you. Number two, that's going to bring you all kinds of conflicts because there'll be a power struggle. Whenever you meet someone new, there's a power struggle. I've seen this. I don't know if you've noticed it, but who's the most powerful? Who can exert power? This is unconscious a lot of the time. I'm getting a nice back massage here from Larry behind me who's putting his paws on me. It's rather nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, number three. Number three, you can tend to start to get lost in it. So there's a vying for power and there's more to struggle with, but the emphasis is on usually on the most dominant person surging forward and taking control. Anyway, have a think about it and I'll get on with my lovely back massage from Larry um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah have a think about this uh, contact me about it if you've got anything to say it's always interesting to hear about okay thanks for listening then once again see you again soon